Who is ready to dominate this year? Lift up your hands and give him praise. Everybody will have a limited time. Just give him praise. Let him hear your voice. Your voice is so unique that it doesn't matter how many millions of people who are worshiping. When you lift your own voice, God knows your voice. In Kechi, Chima, Chinasa, Johnson, Ifoma, Amarachi, your voice is so unique that when you sing among the millions, God knows you are singing. When you shout among the millions, God knows your voice. The texture of your voice is so unique. Somebody give the Lord a big shout. Somebody give the Lord a loud more shout. Somebody shout on top of your voice. Just lift up your voice. And worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him. We can't ever emphasize that. We can't ever do that. Thank him for what he has done already in this conference. For what he's about to do in our lives tonight. For the word that is coming to us. Lord, we proclaim you now and your mind. I'm sure you know that song. That long song. Majesty. Do I have people back in me? Lord, come upon. That is our heart cry tonight. That you release your power. Also give me a mass amen. amen hallelujah have your seat and welcome once more um we're gonna be very very fast i'm gonna just say some things teach speak over your life and then we got over we are in a year god has brought us in for one reason and one reason only and that is to dominate and i'm just trying to talk to you briefly tonight on dynamics of dominion the dynamics of dominion. And let's look at a very popular scripture. Genesis chapter 1, just verse 26, a place I'm sure you know very well. But let's read it together and see something the Lord wants to show us here. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. 
and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. I want to say a few things tonight, very, very briefly. Number one, if you are writing, that dominion is the birthright of every believer. Dominion is the birthright of every believer. And I believe God has put in the heart of our pastor this year that he brought us into dominance. Nothing more, nothing less. Not to be defeated, not to be depleted, not to be depressed, but for one thing only, and to, that is to dominate. And I want to speak over somebody's life this year. You will dominate issues. <laughs> Who I'm speaking to, they are not here. If you are here, I said this year, over every area of life, you shall dominate. <laughs> Dominion is the birthright of every believer. I'm talking about believers because I don't want to talk about everybody because man has lost dominion and if you're not in Christ, you can dominate. That is just the truth. So I'm speaking to believers this evening and I'm, I'm speaking to saints of God in the house. So I'm using the language believer that dominion is the, lang is the birthright of every believer. Anyone, everybody who in Christ, who is born again, you are destined to dominate. To dominate is the destiny of every child of God. To dominate over issues of life. Is the destiny of every child of God. To have an upper hand over the circumstances of life. To have an upper hand over the circumstances of life is the intention of God for your life. To get to a point that every issue of life that comes up, you have an upper hand. You are ahead of time. You are ahead of the devil. You are ahead of issues. To have an upper hand over the issues of life in 2022 and beyond is the intention of God for your life. To live in absolute control. These are meanings of dominion. To live in absolute control over the devils, over issues of life is God's master plan for you. I'd like you to know this, that even if I didn't say anything else, if you can ponder over these few things, it's enough to bring you to a point where you dominate all through the year. That dominion is your birthright. If you are in Christ, if you are born again, dominion is your birthright. To dominate is your destiny. It's not a struggle. It is your destiny to dominate. In every sphere of life, in every sphere of endeavor you found yourself, business, ministry, marriage, whatever it is, wherever you found yourself that you are meant to dominate. It's your destiny. It is not a struggle. It is not even a privilege. It's a birthright. And to have control, not just control, to have absolute control over issues of life. And the devil is God's master plan for you. We see in Genesis chapter 1, a very popular place we read, that God's first intention was that man should dominate. I don't want to exegete theologically on it, I just want to go straight. But we see in Genesis chapter 1, that God's intention was for man to dominate. He said, and let them have dominion. To dominate means to be in charge. It means to oppress. To dominate actually means, the original Hebrew word means to oppress. Uh, that, that means it is wrong for you to see them in the dream pursuing you. They should see you pursuing them. No, you didn't hear me now. Witches should come back and call you a witch. <laughs> no, you didn't hear me now. Oh, come on. Am I talking to anybody in the house this month, this evening? To, to dominate the original Greek word, Hebrew word, I saw that word, it changed my mind. I thought it's to have everything. It means to oppress. To, op to bring everything under you. To a point that <laughs> perhaps they are crying and you are laughing. So I said to myself, if that's what it means, it should be that witches, I shouldn't see them in the dream pursuing me. They should see me in their own dream pursuing them. And I have no problem there waking up calling me a witch. I, I wish anybody heard me now. As in they wake up, they see you as a threat. Am I talking to anybody? You know, in today's world, people think that the easiest set of people to victimize is church people. I'm mean, not sure you agree with me. If someone claims he belongs to any kind of court, all these two naira court, everybody is scared of him. Am I saying the truth? Someone is only human. He said, Do you know where I belong to? He will show you one miserable ring he bought at Mayfatin. You will say, I leave that money between you and God. You know, it's not God, you are scared. <laughs> I don't have anybody in the house. It's not God thing now. He just show you one ring they bought at 24 Mayfatin. He said, I will show you in three days. You will know where I belong. God asks about me. He belongs nowhere. And you are a child of God carrying dominion, born to dominate. Your money in hundreds of thousands. You say, well, I leave that battle between you and God. Am I talking to you? Eventually, the God you are calling to fight, say you are his people of war. I wish anybody heard me now. 
the God you are calling to fight says you are his weapon of what? So if he's going to fight and subdue the enemy, he's going to use you. Someone this year, you shall not be a victim, you shall be a weapon. I don't know who I spoke to. I said someone in 2022, you shall so dominate that you will not only you will not be a victim, you shall become a weapon of war. You believe you make your amen louder. So God's intention for man was to dominate. To oppress, to bring, he said, let them have dominion. Let them oppress. Let them subjugate, subject. Bring everything around them under control. I want to speak to someone here. By the power of the Holy Ghost, there is someone I don't know who I'm talking to. It is like things are getting out of hand. I, I am speaking something I'm not preaching. There is someone that came in here. Where you are now, the way you left things before you came in here, it's like things are getting out of control. I speak by the word of God. Between now and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, everything comes under your control. Whatever it is, whether it's financial issue, marital issue, health issue, career issue, you run in here this evening and you came in here as you are sitting down here. I am speaking to a specific person right here now. Things are out of control. You are not sure what is happening the next morning. I speak over your life that between now and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, everything comes under your control. Because that's it. You are meant to dominate. You are meant to be in charge. Nothing is meant to lord it over you. I wish anybody had me. And that's where God brought us into this year. To a point that the only thing that lost it over you is the lordship of Christ. The only thing that lost it over you is the lordship. Nothing else lost it over you. Nothing else lost it over you. That is God's intention for man. He said, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over everything. Over the fowls of the air, the fish in the sea. Over everything that creeps around. And that is absolute control. And I speak over your life. Prophetically by the word of God. From today you are taking control. I don't know who I spoke to. I said you are taking control. From things that controlled you last year. You shall control them this year. Issues that control you last year. They are coming under your control this way. Circumstances that controlled you last year, they are coming under your control this way. Things that defeated you last year, you shall dominate them this way. If you are the one I'm talking to, your amen will embarrass your neighbor. That's what we came for this year. We didn't come to play. We didn't come to be defeated. We didn't come to express and exhibit a defeatist mentality. We came to dominate. We came to take charge. We came to oppress issues. We came to intimidate. To dominate means to intimidate. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. And darkness could not come. That is intimidation. That you come to a point people can't explain what they are seeing. I wish anybody had me now. People can't explain how it is happening, but they are seeing. There is someone here this year. One of the hardest jobs of those around you is to explain what God is about to do in your life. That's God's intention. That man should be in charge. But because of time, let me show you something. You see, eventually, we know the story very well. Uh, we are Bible students. So I just want, I'm just trying to refresh your mind. Man lost the dominion. To cut the whole story short. It wasn't too long, Adam lost the dominion and uh, it was in chapter 1, it was given to him and uh, by chapter 3, before even verse 15, uh, the story was over. He lost the dominion. The question is, and that's what I'm trying to share with you this evening, why did he lose the dominion? Why did Adam, uh, why did he lose, you know, lost the dominion? I'm going to just tell you one thing, I'm only because of my time. Adam lost the dominion, Adam and the wife lost the dominion and that's what I want you to be careful about this here. He lost the dominion because of his value system. Somebody say value system. No, talk to me, preach like I say, value system. Adam lost the dominion, and we are in a year we want to dominate. God has already given us dominion in Christ. We want to see what can stop us 
from dominating that will make us lose the financial, spiritual, marital dominion God has already handed over to us in 2022. Do you get my point? And I said one of the reasons or the major reason Adam lost his dominion is because of his value system. Somebody say value system. Adam valued an apple over the whole garden. Adam valued an apple over the whole garden. Adam valued, Adam and his wife valued the voice of Satan over the voice of God. Has God said, and you agree that God said, even when you know that God said, who else should you listen to? If a guy is done talking, does anybody's opinion else matters? Talk to me, church. If a guy has said something, if God has said something and you heard God, does anybody else's opinion matter? You know, the devil was so, it, it was just a very smooth game. Had God said, if Adam were to be wise or he was wise or Eve was wise, rather, she would have said, so you even know that God said. But you know, she continued with the conversation and then she lost the dominion. Child of God, I want to say something to you. For us to be in dominion in 2022 and dominate, it's not a wishful thinking. The dominion given to Adam had principles that sustains it. I'd like you to know that everything in the kingdom is given freely, but they are sustained by principles. I wish anybody heard me now. Everything in the kingdom is given freely, but they are sustained by what? In the kingdom, everything is available, but accessibility requires revelation. In the kingdom of God, everything is available. According as his divine nature, he has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness. So in the kingdom, everything is available. But why are many not having it? They don't know how to assess what is available. And so when it comes to dominion, which is our birthright, it has principles. There are ways, there are things, there are systems, there are kingdom principles and cultures that if we neglect them, they are going to keep us in perpetual defeat. Even though God had given us dominion. And I want to say about two of them or two of them and then we'll pray because of time. I'd like you to know that if one of the things we have to understand, one of the patterns that sustains dominion, one of the principles that will help us to dominate this year and beyond is we need to understand the key. And that is a key or what I prefer to call having or the easiest way is to have the right value system. Remember I told you that Adam and Eve lost their dominion because of their value system. They had a wrong value system. And if we are going to have dominion and dominate this year, one of the major keys that is going to help us is to have the right value system. Somebody say the right value system. Say it. Say it again. The right value system. The simplest way to retain and sustain dominion is to have the right value system. The easiest way to lose dominion and lose what God has given to you in Christ this year and beyond is to have the wrong value system. There are a lot of people in the Bible we know too well that the Lord gave them dominion, gave them some things money could not buy and they lost it because they had a wrong value system. Take for example a man we all know, a man called Esau. Look at Genesis chapter 25. Someone, can I have it on the screen? Genesis chapter 25. Let's read from verse 29, maybe to verse 34 there about. I'm going to, it's going to explain what I want to say. The Bible said, and Jacob sold a pottage. And Esau came from the field and was faint. And, Jack, and Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I'm at a point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lintels. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thor Esau despised his birthright. I pray for you. That this year and beyond, you won't take actions you don't know the consequences. <laughs> no, someone didn't hear me now. That you will not take decisions. That you will not value momentary things over eternities. I didn't hear that amen. Esau just ate porridge and rose up and went. See, that you finish that thing doesn't mean it has finished. 
I wish anybody had me now. That you just did and sharp, sharp and came out. The consequences will not sharp, sharp and go. Esau, the Bible says, Esau just, he ate and he rose up and he told him it was gone. He then realized that for the next thousands of years, all through eternity, that you are getting up here doesn't mean you have left the consequences. Wrong value system. Here is a young man that was born and he had a wrong value system. He lost dominion. I told you one of the things that causes the loss of dominion or that will stop us from dominating is the wrong value system. We saw it in Adam and then we are seeing it in Esau. Esau was born, but he had a wrong value system. Let me tell you, you are Bible students, so most of us here are preachers too. I don't need to go on, go on. So let's be talking like you already know the story. When Esau, rather, when Jacob, rather, was buying the birthright, listen to me. When Jacob came to buy the birthright of Esau, he wasn't looking at the physical position of being the firstborn. It meant nothing to Jacob. It wasn't the physical position of Esau being called the firstborn. No, he was buying the spiritual heritage in the family. I wish anybody had me now. I'm going somewhere. He was buying the spiritual dealings that started from their grandfather Abraham and Isaac. Jacob must have grown up. His father Isaac must have called him and his twin brother and told them stories about their father Abraham, how he, Isaac, was born. How he was, his father almost killed him in the name of a God he wanted to sacrifice. How his father had a God that cannot be seen with eyes, a God that is not molded, not like other gods of other nations. How his father has a God or served a God that nobody sees but that perform wonders. How his mother, Sarah, waited for 25 years or above before he could come. How his father took him on the instruction of that God to kill him as a sacrifice when he was 17. How somehow that God commanded miraculously a ram to come out to be a substitute to his death. How he grew up. How that God began to appear to him. How his own wife Rebecca sought for children. How two of them came. He must have told them a lot of things. Maybe in their morning devotion, he gathered them and said, listen, you sons of Isaac, you grandchildren of Abraham, there is a God, your father. Why they are listening, Isaac, Esau was taking things. Esau was placing values on what his father was saying. So Esau, that he finished, let's go and eat. This devotion has lasted too long. Mommy is calling us to eat. Am I talking to anybody? So Isaac, rather, Jacob, rather, had value. He wanted to have that dealing. And somehow Jacob realized that it's like this thing goes on first son, first son. Am I talking to anybody now? So my father, grandfather Abraham, Isaac, because Abraham had other children now. So Isaac, now, now the next thing is going to be Esau. So I am nowhere in the equation of these dealings with God. I'm going to be just one of the crowd. And so when his brother, he wanted that relationship. That he wanted to be, a, he was willing to tread temporal satisfaction to get an eternal place. I wish I'm talking to anybody this evening. He was willing to let go temporal pleasure. How many of us want to dominate this year? You must be willing to let go temporal pressures of sin. Temporal pressures of gratification. So get into a dimension where you are in charge of everything God has placed around you. Am I talking to anybody? He was willing to let go in order to have a relationship with God. Whereas Esau saw the same thing. They meant nothing to him. Value system. So Jacob valued spiritual things. Valued relationship with God. Esau knew about the spiritual heritage. He knew about the God of his forefather Abraham. He knew all the dealings God had with his father Isaac, but they meant nothing to him. He was willing to tread a spiritual heritage just for a porridge of him. I'm going somewhere. He was willing to let go a covenant, a dealing that would transfer to his own children that would have given him dominion. He should have been the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Esau. And it was still sweet. He sacrificed that and left everything for a momentary satisfaction. Now, let me say something. I'm going somewhere. When you hear God say, Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. It wasn't the physical stature of Esau. I wish anybody heard me. In the, in the 
instance, if you look at them at their bed description, Esau is even more handsome. He was reddish. He has hairs. He looks like Oibo children. Jacob looked like African village boy. Very smooth, very swift. He looked like a boy born during the Civil War. It was Esau that even had a good look. Jacob hadn't any good look. When God said, Esau I hate, Jacob I love, he was not talking about their physical Jacob or the physical Esau. He was talking about their value systems. When God said, I hate Jacob, God doesn't hate anybody. He simply, when, rather, when he said, I hate Esau, he's simply saying, I hate Esau's value system. There are some of us, what is keeping you down is no demon in the village, it's your value system. Stop looking for who tied you. Some, did, some people in your village don't even know you exist. Always looking for who to blame. I would have been a star if they, 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 they didn't even know. In fact, if you go to village now, it will take you three weeks to introduce yourself before they finally realize whose son you are. The biggest demon is the demon of indiscipline and wrong value system. I wish anybody had me now. They are tying my money. They are tying my money. Nobody tied your money. Your financial recklessness tied your money. Look at the year is coming and going. Can I say something to you? Listen to me. You know, this year, year of this, year of that, I believe that God said those things to us, to all those men of God. But can I tell you something? In principle, the Bible says something about every year. It said, thou crowns the year with goodness. Every year is crowned with goodness. The difference between one year and the other is the value you bring into it. The difference between 2021, 2022, 2022, this year is, is going now. We spent 13 days already. He said, don't they finish you? Before you don't work out, I know, before you know it now, he, 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 we open our eyes in August. <laughs> He's running. Was he not like yesterday, all of you came here and did crossover? We have spent 13 days put. By the time you are coming on Sunday here, we are in 16th. Before you return again, we are in 23rd. The last Sunday here is started. You wake up in Tuesday, 2nd February. That one, no, they complete now. <laughs> that one, you own what's safe. You know, they complete. That's how we do. And the year goes. What is beautiful about the year is the value you bring into the year. It's not even the team of the year. They can even say the, the, the team of this year is Onyema, and your name is Onyema. They can still finish Onyema 2022, the year of Onyema, and they won the game Nobody will know you. Sorry if your name is Onyema. It's what didn't enter my mouth. Too. <laughs> I don't mean, I don't know. If it be other name, it's a coincidence. I don't mean to disrespect. Amen? He said, this is my year. Pastor even said prophetically, it's the year of Onyema. And my name is Onema. And you are here roaming around, roaming around, going like you lost your mind. You woke up around November and say they said they put you in a bottle. As big as you can, you can enter a bottle. You're actually in a bottle. Bottle of indecision, bottle of no value, bottle of no principles, bottle of no pattern. And can I announce to you, only you can break that bottle. Only you can break that bottle. When God said I didn't like him, it wasn't Esau he was talking about. He said, I hate his value system. I didn't like him. Not him as a person. I created him. God does not hate anybody. I don't like the way Esau valued things. Esau can handle dominion. Esau saw spiritual heritage. Esau preferred me. Esau preferred the porridge of him over me, God. Esau saw me, Jehovah. And choose porridge and cook by another boy like him. When you hear that Esau despised his birthright, that place simply means Esau despised his dominion. I pray for you this day. You will not despise your dominion. You will not give out your dominion. You will not do things that will rob you of your dominion. You believe you make your MM louder. Can I say this to you? Some of us here speak by the Spirit of God. You're a career person. God is taking you this year to where you dominate in your office. I don't know who I spoke to. You are going to dominate in your office. 
You are going to get promotion in such a way that they wonder what is it the normal way. But please, I have an advice and an appeal to you. Please don't empower your critics. A place they're trying to make you a, a senior manager from ordinary person, they start work by 7 30, come by 8 15. You are empowering those who are opposing your promotion. Your value system is wrong. As you are seeing me, eh, it doesn't matter how I try, I can't wake up before 6 30. You see, the demon, your village people have succeeded entirely. You see, your village people, they have finally caught up with you. Wrong value system. Do you want to go far this year? Answer. Do you want to dominate this year? Have the right value system. Hello? Am I talking to anybody here? I say, have the what? Shout it, preach it to me. Have the what? Shout it again. Have the what? Say it again. Have the what? Right value system. How does it start? Value God. Value God. Value God. Value God. Let God know you value him. Value God. There are some people, when God look at them, God says, I hate them. It's not that this guy hates but When God said, I hate Esau, you know, growing up, man of God, as a, as a young believer, this scripture really baffled me. Like, for God said, we shouldn't hate, but he's hating. I realized what God hated wasn't Esau. It was Esau's value system. Am I talking to anybody? How could God hate a man who was trying very well and then love a man who is a supplanter? Jacob may have his mistakes, but he had value for eternal things. He saw a spiritual heritage and he was willing to go hungry to get it. That was why he took over. That was why this guy lost his dominion and he took it. This year, if I said the next thing I want to say, value spiritual things. Do you want to dominate? Answer me, church. Time is going. Do you want to dominate? Value service are both clubbing. Value weekend program are both premiership. Value purity against impurity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very simple. Value spiritual things. God's grounds against Esau is that Esau didn't value spiritual things. What are you willing? Listen to me. Do you want to go for this year? Do you want to go for this year? Being in service on Sundays should be enough excuse not to be anywhere else. I wish you didn't hear me now. Being in service on Sundays should be enough excuse we are why you shouldn't be anywhere else. You know, you see some, some folks, some brethren. I couldn't make it to service. One of my, one of my guy just took a from Thailand. At your age. <laughs> See what poverty has reduced you to. Now the guy just took a Saturday night. Took about a very late. <laughs> I beg laugh. That's why you miss service. Do you want to go for this year? This year, that guy took about a Saturday night. Two years be church to Sunday morning. You didn't hear me now. Do you hear me again? I'll do it again, me again. Do you hear me? What can I call two again? Two again? Are you in a? We are just in the hotel, lo. Chilling because you have not seen AC before. So if you don't get free, you miss service. You will not dominate that way. Value spiritual things. Value the word of God. I, I want to proceed. Please, we're talking about dominating. You know, we can come up and sometimes we we'll get angry at the end of the year. Uh, these are things that will make, do you want to dominate this year? Allow the government of heaven to control you. Listen, no rebel can enjoy the resources of a country. No rebel. No rebel can enjoy the resources of what? Allow the government of heaven You know why some of us don't steal? Not that if we steal anything will happen. There is a government in charge in our system. You know why we don't go about doing anything? If we do, what do you go do? If 
will go out and smoke and drink and do anything. What do you go do? If you talk, you shut up. Do you know why? There is a government in place. That it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. There is a supernatural system installed in us. That's what so why your pastor will do. <laughs> you fall. Don't go and try that thing. You, know. you spit at people. Sha. <laughs> Don't try that at home. You, be... <laughs> you see that thing? That's what we say. Abu Zilamasu. are not tricks. They are not lamps. So, uh, I, I see how pastor does it. He will do his hand like this. He will do, your own saliva will follow. And the person will say, oh God, oh give me. <laughs> are we together? Do you want to dominate? I've stressed this point already. Value spiritual what? Value spiritual things. What are your priorities? What are your priorities? What are your priorities? Listen, your priority in life determines your position. Your position determines your prosperity. Let me repeat that again. Your priority in life determines your position. Your position determines your prosperity in life. Jacob valued, Jacob value was eternity, spirituality and future. Jacob valued eternity. Jacob valued spirituality. Jacob valued spiritual heritage for Esau. He valued food. Esau valued porridge yam that is piping hot. You know, the way he saw the thing. The man, see, let me tell you. Do you want to dominate this year? My time is good. Do you want to dominate? I'm not hearing you, church. Do you want to dominate? Your relationship with God should be your no-go area. There should be a place they touch you, my daughter. You say, ah! If Jacob was wise, he saw her that. that time Jacob said, So your bet. He said, What did you say? Are you stupid? Are you mad? Are you out of yourself? Come on, you're out of this place. There are some help men offer you. By the time they are done offering you the help, you become a spiritual leper. That thing you came here and thought that is breakthrough. You slept your way through, it's not breakthrough. That's not a testimony. You can fool us. Heaven is not. Heaven is aware of what happened. That thing you call the breakthrough. You know what you did. If your life lays here, how you got that promotion, how they took you. Can we watch the drama? That thing you say God remembered you. It's Yahoo Yahoo. People are cursing you. There are areas of your life that shouldn't be touched. If you want to dominate. Imagine if Jacob was wise. He saw Rada. That time he said, Nam, I did die you. Give me that porridge, GMO. If he said, well, give me your two cartridges. He said, go and take, take. Give me food. If he was that type, that value, has the right value system. Once that guy touched that thing, his eyes will open. There are things people should touch in your life and your eyes will open. He said, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are the next human manager resources, but whatever they call it. He said, but can we chill out? Let's chill out in the call one hotel. Just meet me at work. Let's, let's finalize it. By Monday, you are taking over. And then you go. You sold the bet white. And then you came and say, you had breakthrough. You didn't have breakthrough. You slept your way through. <laughs> Nobody might know, but heaven is aware. That one is not testimony. Am I talking to anybody? Do you want to dominate this year? Value spiritual what? I didn't hear me now. Value spiritual what? Value God above gold. Value God above girls. Value God above money. Value God. Did you hear what I said now? God knew that. That was why God said, it's what I hate. Jacob, I love. Let me tell you the next thing because of my time. You want to dominate this year? Mind who feeds you. Feed. Feed. F-W-E-D. Mind who feed you. Or who feeds you. Most of us here, yeah, your real pastors are in, in social media. Your real pastor, some of you that the freeze is pastoring you. 
is your guy. If we check his like, we see your name. If we click his like, that mind who fits you. Am I talking to anybody now? Look up here. Let me say what I mean. The Bible told us in Genesis 3 verse 7. Look up here. The Bible said, Genesis 3 verse 7, he said, and the eyes of them were both opened and they knew that they were naked and they saw the fig leaves together and made themselves. Look at what I'm trying to say. There were two women, two people in the Bible. One name was Adam. One was Eve. Devil came and fed them. Did he feed them? Talk to me. Time is going. Did he feed them? He fed them and their eyes got what? Oh, come on. Do I have a class here? Please respond. He fed them and their eyes got what? Look at Luke 24. Luke 24, quickly. Verse 29 to 31. Luke 24, verse 29 to 31. But they constrained him, saying, that's Jesus, abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in and tarried with them, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave them. That he, he fed them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Stop. Man of God, two different people fed two different people. The same result. Follow me. I'm, I'm trying to say one more thing and then we'll hand up. Two different people fed two different people. The same what? Satan went to the garden and fed Adam and Eve and their eyes got opened. Jesus met two men on their way to Amos took bread and fed them and their eyes got what? Ask your neighbor, who opened your eyes? It's good to stay woke. You know, we are in a stay woke generation. Oh, talk to me now. Everybody stay. It's a, it's a slogan now. I'm not against staying woke. The thing is, who woke you? I'm not against that. Satan fed them, their eyes open. Jesus fed them, their eyes open. When you hear people telling you, nah, my eyes don't open, don't celebrate them. Ask them, who opened their eyes? Not the only God, they open eyes. Satan, they also open eyes. So we no more celebrate, nah, madam, I hear, on a kuzik again, One of the problems we have in church world today is that some people came and opened our eyes. Social media pastors opened our eyes. Gave us revelations that has... Oh God. You know better. Since they are done giving us, we can't even find where King James is. When somebody tells you I'm wiser now, please check the kind of wisdom. Because there are all kinds of wisdom. J James said this wisdom is not from above. It's earthly, it's sensual. It promotes sensuality. When you have the wisdom that tells you that it doesn't matter what you do, keep committing. I'm already struggling. You gave me some life. I'm not, that's what you tell me every day. That's what you... Do you know that what you hear affects you? Your heart, see, every word is acidic to your mind. When you hear the first one, your mind may re resist. As you hear it over and over, the, ma the mind will melt. Do you want to... Do you want to dominate this year? I'm handing off. Mind who feed you. Did you get the point now? Who is doing what? Those of you that have multiple pastors, you will purge. No, 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 no. It's just a truth. I'm not disrespecting you. It's not a cause. You know, physical, there's a way you feed. Rice, salad, or has soup. Afan soup. A dick icon. Banga. Yoruba pepper soup. What will happen? You will purge. All of them are good, but they can't go together. Do you want to have a spiritual stature? You must have a diet. You can't feed on everything. You can't. This year, God has brought us here. Today, you are in BYC Assembly. The next day, you are in AGC Assembly. The next one, you are in Rema City. The next two days, you are in Bigger City. The next one, you are in what city? The next day you are in greater Rema City. Then there's a greatest Rema City. My sister. <laughs> My sister. Answer me. My sister. 
my brother. May God have mercy. <laughs> Do you know why their eyes got open? They said, abide with us. He broke bread and gave them. Their eyes opened. Satan brought apple and gave them. Their eyes opened. So not the only God, they open eye. Satan too, they open eye. No, the only God, they give revelation. Satan too, they give. Please, have who confirm. When you are done with dry fasting, have a pastor who wet your fasting. In after dry fasting, you need to do wet what? Who vet what you had? Did you say God say? Because it's not only God that opens eyes. Satan also do what? Do you want to dominate this year? Walk humbly. What did I say? What did I say? God resist the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Listen, grace is the entitlement of the humble. Every humble person is entitled to grace. There is one man God can deny grace. It's not the man who fasts for 100 days. It's not even the man who sleep in church for money tonight. I wish anybody heard me now. It is not the man who walk oh, holy ho. It's not the man who spoke in tongues from dusk to dawn. It's the man who is humble. Grace is the entitlement of the humble. God resists the proud. And he gives grace. Everybody pursues grace. Grace pursues the humble. This year, if you must dominate, God will not allow a proud man to dominate. The last thing God will do is to empower a proud man. And he knows our heart. The last thing God will do, if, if God allows that money, that contract that will give you 150 million naira profit, will you still be in service? Can the usher still tell you where to stay? <laughs> Sir? Is there? Yeah, will, will you, you see, he knows our hearts. One of the songs my mom sings of blessed memory, and she says two things. One Hebrew song, she will say, Chuku bonye ne lanya no bi. Just that line. Now God go decide who go day, where he go day. There are people, you look at them, they are not qualified. And that's the biggest attraction. Because grace qualifies the unqualified and disqualifies the qualified. That's what grace does. You are qualified, grace speaks you and disqualifies you. You are not qualified, grace speaks you and qualifies you. Grace speaks a man, turn your weakness into wonder. All the men God use in the Bible, we are men who complain of their weakness. When they complain, God said, that thing that is your weakness is my attraction. That thing that is your weakness. Now that thing that attracts me. Jeremiah, Lord, I'm a child that can't speak. God said, that is my attraction. That you are a child is what I want. Moses, Lord, I can't, I can't even talk. God said, that's exactly what I'm calling you. That's the thing is what I'm attracted to. Watch all the people who say, Lord, we are here. Who else will God use? <laughs> when Samuel came to anoint in the house of Jesse, he said, bring all your sons. And he brought seven of them. The Bible says, what's his name again? Eliab. Eliab had the statue of a reverend. You know, there are those that have ministry statue. <laughs> a lot of people like us, who are not, we, are, we don't have good English. We don't have anything. We don't, have, we don't look like it. You may not look like it, but God has a way of making you to become it. There are those who look like it until they die, they never become it. Grace is denied them. They look like it, but until they leave this earth, they never become it. There are those who don't look like it, look, look like it, but God said, I know you don't look like it, but I will make it. I will make it to be it. Stretch your hands. This year, what nobody thought you will become, you shall be an exceed. I don't know who I spoke to. I said, what nobody thought you should become, you shall become and you shall exceed it. If that's your portion, make your amen to be the loudmost. what grace does. Man of God, I'm holding up. Eliab came out. Has the chest, the charisma. And when Eliab came, he almost fooled Samuel. All the sons of Eli Jesse came out. 
And when Samuel saw Eliab, he said, surely the Lord's anointed is here. God said, objection of Ahud. Man looks at the outward. I look at the inward. You know the truth? You know what baffled me? When all the sons came out, they did what I preached several years ago. I called it emergency cleansing. He said, Eliab, sanctify the, uh, Jesse, call her and sanctify them. And they forgot the one God chose. They forgot the It's better men forget you and God remembers you. You see, when God has honored a man, hating him is wastage of hatred. Say, neighbor, don't waste your hatred. Don't want us to go. Say, neighbor, stop wasting your hatred. You know, hatred is expensive. Do you know how many bones it takes you to hate? How many friends at work? That's why you are aging without even with all the two has hope. Is it? I don't know. Is this two are still existing? Is it that? Uh, don't know any. I don't know their names. But please, you see this here. Don't waste your hatred. The man God has honored. You are fighting God, though. Because I've honored this man. He said you're hating him. Two of you, Nuna, Hokok and an undertaker. The more you do, God do. The Bible says somewhere, something I saw in the Bible, I said, nobody should love me. I said, nobody should love me again. Do you know that scripture? Bible said, and Isaac loved Esau because he brings him venison. I believe, man of God, that's what God saw. God said, okay, Isaac, you love Esau. Because he brings anything to you. Me, I love Jacob. I have discovered that God is the helper of the resisted. He is the helper. Ni bana sima one no to onye. Uno bakota kaku nu megi de God asem wano. Kwe hundi ni ne unge chi shu no no na la one by one. Don't join. Oga kagin jo. Oga reji because God will back him. And one with God is super majority. Bible says somewhere again that really taught me something. He said, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Now, man, could I hate me? You see, this hatred, <laughs> I beg, this hatred that will open my financial womb, where are the haters? When God saw that Leah was hated, he opened has a wolf honoring the heritage. To anyone here, it's like men rejected you. They hated you. Congratulations. They are putting God in a place where he has no option. Some of those songs you sing in Igbo, they are true. My mother will say in Igbo that God will want no fool. You know that language? When somebody is alone, God goes to pitch his tent with him. So I don't stay with the crowd. I look for the people so that when God come, he will dash me something too. I've learned, see, the scriptures are to make you wise. Stop finishing the Bible. You don't know how to make decisions. Mind where you pitch your tent. Because one day results go show. When God saw, there are many here. This year, God will look at the hatred of men on you. I didn't hear the amen. And he will open your financial womb. He will open your marital womb. He will open the doors of your children. You believe you make your amen louder. Did you hear what I said? Humble yourself. Let God see. What are you doing with pride? What are you even proud of? How much do you have? What are you even proud of? What are you even proud? What are you even proud of? The last time I checked, your breath is in your nostril. If God gives you that car, will protocol still tell you where to park? 2021 model or 2022 model? Informatics. Will you, still, will you come to church? Can your pastor still tell you? That's what God is looking at. The meek, will he guide in judgment? He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. Do you know the scripture? For they shall do what? Do you want to inherit, dominate this earth? Be meek. You know why you should be meek? God makes the meek and mocks the proud. When God sees a meek man, he makes him. When he sees the proud, he mocks him. He says, God will resist the proud. Look at what it means here. I want to round up. God sees me. I'm proud. And I'm coming this way. And my intention is to get here.
God that no che, that no come Imagine when God no che ozo. Say that that cross on no level lay no come hunger. Who will help you? If demons are against you, you call God. If somehow without knowing, it's God that is resisting. Say that that cross on no level lay come hunger. Who else is your helper? You are finished for life. Stay away from pride. Stay away from what? Be humble. You want to dominate? Be humble. At all the great men I see in the kingdom, their humility amazes. Man of God, I want to hand up. I saw something on Facebook. That thing, that thing struck all into me. Minister, what's the name of this guy that saying, my worship is my weapon? Dawson. I saw it on Facebook. I was watching. Dawson came to one program held by Baba Kumuyi. 81 years old man. Dawson came to greet the Baba Kumuyi. Papa stood up. I saw, I saw. Police person told me, did you see something? That man, young man, he said, not for almost to be his grandchild. We are at which level are they ministering? We were, he's the one validating him. The guy was coming. Papa Kumuyi stood up. Now the way I look, he should be the one standing. God said, did you see something? God is humble. You know how you know a man that nears God? It's not shakusha, sokoto, sokoto, brazil, kanu, kanu, kanu. It's not that thing. Now leave that thing. We are used to that. Stop disturbing us with those tongues. Kaku, kapa, ike, ke, 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 ke. Shut up! We're trying to come out and don't tell Where are you? Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let's talk something else. Do you know the humblest? God, the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Holy Spirit created the whole earth? Do you know he created the whole earth? Do you know he raised Jesus from death? Do you know he's God? Do you know his holiness has no description? Yet he came to live inside you. Inconsistent you. One minute you have offended with mouth, with thoughts, with look. He still lived inside you. And you keep offending. He keeps saying, you, you come to church. Usher says, sit down here. He says, oh, do you know who I am? Tell Pastor Annie, it's me. I can't sit here. If you do you hear me? With the Holy Spirit inside you. You, me. You don't know you. I'm some, you don't know you. With all the insults, you wake up by 4 a.m. quiet time, you sleep to 7.30. You say, Lord, I'm sorry. He will still tell you, go. You, if not, if they come to church and then greet you, I'm, I'm leaving this church soon. It has gotten to a point. They don't recognize who is who here again. When did you get the Holy Spirit? Your quiet time, you are producing saliva. He woke you up. That's how. That's why, do you know how you know a man who nears God? The more he goes near God, the more humbler. You see a man who is proud, leave his revelation, leave his back tumble. That man is not near God. Association brings assimilation. If you go near a humble man, you will naturally be humble. If you see a man who is doing like pickup, he's telling you, I me and God, he's lying, his mind is fooling him. If you near God, one thing that strikes you is his humility. God is too humble that even humility thinks he's not humble to compare to God. Stand up on your feet. Stretch your hands towards me. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to say this to you. Listen. While we are standing, I need to let you know this. It will help you to, to dominate. Celebrate grace. Hello? Celebrate what? Associate and celebrate what? When you see people that has grace, this grace is in various dimensions. Grace is the sum total of all God is. And you know what God did? He vested them at various, at various varieties in men. Grace of God is a man. Jesus is God's grace. He came as a man. Hang around grace. Celebrate men of any grace you lack. Associate with the man that has it. When you get there, some of us, the thing is that people that should be your mentor, you have made them your colleague. So they treat you as, you see, you see your wahala, it's not your village people, it's your mindset. People you should go to and tell them, I came to learn. So that they will open up what they are doing. You went there, you are doing like a peacock, they broke one of the leaves. You want to show you are like them. They treat you like them. That's why they're nothing. Nobody helps his opponents. 
People help those who look up to them. Sell this year, you'll be do one of the minutes. Be humble, Bano. See grace. If you see a man way big pass, you carry back for lamb. In Igbo side here, we don't know who's who. You know that now? In Igbo, among pastors, are we not all men of God? Oh. Here, we don't know our fathers. I have friends across the West, across wherever. I have friends across Benue State and other. I was speaking with Michael Oropo some time ago. I, I, I was like, God, what is, what is the problem with Southeast? Somebody leaves a place. The first thing he does is to rubbish his father. So to stand. You can't make yourself a warfare to a man who took care of your welfare. You will, even devil will curse you. That pillar look like leggy. Did you hear me, church? Did I say something to you? Celebrate grace. Don't be ashamed to say there is this thing you know how to do. Run, to, run for friendship. It's not wrong to meet this man and say, can, can I be your friend? I like this thing you do. I like it. Be humble. Let me say something to you. Go pray. When it comes to matter of grace, God is the landlord of grace. Men are his caretakers. And you know caretaker can make a landlord to chase you out of the house. If I'm living where Pastani is a caretaker, the landlord is in Europe. Do you know that when the man comes back to Nigeria, who does he meet? Pastani. Whatever Pastani tells him about me can make him to tell his lawyer to write me without even asking me. Do you know what God did? He is a landlord of grace. He made men the caretakers of grace. There are men in music ministry. They, are, they have a usual. Don't meet them and start saying, are we not all music ministry? Let him go. Let them teach you. Snatch comes here and I say snatch. If he snatch me, I'm snatchy. That's how you miss opportunity. Some of you to help her carry her bag and see if she can touch that hand. Pastor Chris has been touching the head. Who? You. Look like I'm Goku. You meet people. See those who big pass you. Let them know. I know say you big. You can't hang around gracious men and end up in disgrace. You know why I hang, why I hang around your pastor? Plenty grace. Plenty grace to tap. Plenty things. In fact, when I come here, I wonder how some of you are the way you are. Because we that put pipe from over hill and we are collecting small. The thing is even, <laughs> if I'm that close, like you are. Nah. Grace. Celebrate grace. Don't criticize what you want. Stop this thing. That one is witchcraft chapter 3. You know you like this. It's on your honor, your honor, remember? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, boshi, boshi. In Wakala, on weekend, a price are like a quad advance of on Kobe. My brother, my sister, did you hear me? Somebody gifted my friend a Prado Jeep, 40 million. I took my wife, we packed a good envelope. I said, This is for four. That's how to celebrate Chris. Uh, 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 motor. Uh, it's not a pa pa paradox, it's in a car tap here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you want that Jeep? When you envy a man, you are, you are querying God why he blessed him. Envy is querying God. God, how dare you bless bliss without telling me? That's what envy means. You are querying God. God, how is you before the bullion? That's what envy means. This year, you will celebrate grace. Celebrate those around you. No room for envy this year. We are dominating. No room for competition. Comparison is a sign of spiritual illiteracy. They that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Each time we start looking like comparison, it means spiritually we are illiterate. Wise people recognize grace. 
We are not coming to service this way to rub shoulder. We are coming to join shoulder and carry the burden of God together. A sister sang very well. Look at what your pastor did. She ministered. I mean among the choir members. I have choir in my church. She ministered very well. While she was singing with you, power came on you. She dismissed and dropped the mic. She just sat down. You were I said, see with the witch, oh. Biake, biake, biake. Witchcraft is not flying. Oh, yeah, we have a witch. I'm sorry being blunt, but that's it. Sister, I like the way, whenever you do this song, my life revives. Even if you have nothing to offer, appreciate that grace. Stretch your hands towards me. Speak in tongues. I've overstayed my time. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. I don't know whatever I must have ministered to you today. However, however, I just came to throw things here and there. Speak over your life. My season of domination has come. I don't know for you tonight. I am living here with a usual grace. There are graces your pastor has poured on this altar. So I am not just preaching. I am designing this altar. Every word that was said here in course overnight. I am not living without any of them. Speaking tongues. I'm telling you what I'm doing now. As I'm marching around. Every grace leadership center. I didn't come to preach. It's not preaching thing to me. I came to receive. Forget about my preaching. As I am marching here, I am speaking prophetically to my life. That every word spoken to the servant of God here, all of them are working in my life. I am part of this family. I am a bona fide member of this family. I have the interest of this family. So whatever that is the, the, the profit of this family, I am entitled to it. My heart is here. My mind is here. My spirit is here. Somebody speak in tongues. What did you hear? 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 Value spiritual things. Value spiritual things. Value spiritual things. 30 seconds prayers. Value spiritual things. Who is feeding you? How many pastors do you have? How many churches do you attend in a week? God has given you a pastor after his heart. In social media, you have 30 pastors. Be humble. Be humble. The humble is entitled to grace. Grace is the entitlement of the humble. Be humble. Celebrate grace. Associate with men who carry one grace. Any grace you see, don't be ashamed to say you are tapping. When you celebrate grace, it's not that man you're celebrating. It's the God that gave the grace. Don't be ashamed. I am what God says I am. Can we sing that song as we go? I am what God says I am. I am a winner. Sing it prophetically. We're handing off. Stretch your hands towards me. Let's sing one more time. I am what God. Don't just sing it. Say it like you're talking to yourself. Over my marriage, over my children, over my ministry, over my calling. I am a winner. I'm not a loser. Don't just sing it. Say it like you're talking to yourself. I am what Say it like you're defending a case in the court. I am, I am what, what God says I am. I am. Please sing it. I want you to make it like you're talking to your eyes. God says I am. I am a winner and not a loser. I am what God says I am. Stretch your hands towards me. I join my faith with that of our Father in the house. I decree that this year you step into your time of domination. I say from this moment you step into your time of domination. I decree that this year you will not test defeat. I say you shall not know financial defeat. You will not know marital defeat. You will not know spiritual defeat. You shall not know career defeat. In the name of Jesus. This year you will not know depression. 
Nothing shall depress you. Nothing will deplete you. You are going out to dominate. You dominate financially. You dominate spiritually. You dominate maritally. You dominate in your health. You dominate in your ministry. You dominate in your workplace. In the name of Jesus. I release on you the anointing to value spiritual things. You will not do religion this year. You will have a practical living relationship with God. You will overcome sin this year. What overcame you last year, you will overcome this year. You will value God. You will value His word. You will value fellowship. You will value brethren. In the name of Jesus. This year. Everybody will not have access to you. Voices that will open your eyes negatively will not have access to you. People that will teach you not to pay tithes, teach you not to be serious with God. People that will confuse you and tell you pastors are eating the money. People that will tell you not have me here, church. People that will tell you not live your life. Such relationship, God will cut you off from them. I have this leading in my heart to pray for all of you now. Put your hands in your heart. It's a leading. I ask, see, I'm including myself. May God restore your childlike heart towards him. There was a heart you once had towards God. That heart was so innocent. That heart was a heart of a disciple. A heart of a son. Your pastor is preaching today. You are wearing the topic. From your seat there, you are telling your, your brother, yeah, yeah, pastor, they put a lot of Satan has taken over. This year, that devil is rebuked of your life. Grace for humility is released on you. Are you rebuked proud of your life? You will know men of grace. You will associate with men of grace. You will celebrate men of grace. Listen to me. Associating with mediocrity is not humility. It is stupidity. You didn't hear me now. Associating with what? Imagine this, my daughter, please. You want to go to Lagos. You see me that stopped at Bata. You went and stayed with me there. You are not humble. You are stupid. This is not where you are heading to. This man is not headed my direction. Let me look for those going where I'm going to. This year, this year, you will look for men of grace, women of grace, who are where you are aspiring to be. You will associate with them. You will celebrate them. What they carry will rub off on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands and give him praise. 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 Give him praise.